This is Unit 2, Lesson F, Part 2, Rates, Ratios, Percentages, and Proportions. Your objective for today is going to be the same as 2F, Part 1. We're still going to be applying rates, ratios, percentages, and proportional relationships. What we want to start off with is our simple interest formula. We have two formulas for this section. Simple interest formula should look familiar to you guys because it's a formula we worked with in Unit 1. Our formula is I equals P times R times T. And if you recall, P was your initial amount, R was your rate of interest, but remember we have to write it as a decimal, and T was your time, but remember your time has to be in years. So we're going to do a little bit more work with that today. Your second formula is your rate of change formula, and this is going to be new for you guys. What is important is we can have a percent change of increase or decrease. Our formula that we're going to use is we're going to have a numerator and a denominator. In your numerator, this is going to be your amount of increase or decrease, okay? So you're going to have one or the other, amount of increase or decrease. In your denominator, you're always going to have your original amount, so the amount that you start with. And this formula is going to make a little bit more sense when we actually get into solving problems. So let's take a look at our first example. We want to make sure that we're carefully reading and answering each question. So here is our first one. What is the interest on? $1,500 invested for 48 months in an account that earns simple interest at a rate of 8% per year. Well, right away it's asking you, what is the interest? So you guys should already have written down on your paper, I equals P times R times T. That's the formula that we have to be working with. Now remember, P is always going to be your initial amount. So in this case, we can go ahead and plug in that $1,500. We don't need to change anything. Times, we then need to multiply our rate, which we know is 8%. But remember, we have to write it as a decimal. We move our decimal two places to the left to get 0.08. And then lastly, we have to multiply it by the time. So in this case, our time is 48 months. But remember, we don't want to put 48 months in our equation because our time has to be in years. So what we have to do is we have to take that 48 months and convert it to years. Well, you guys know there's 12 months in a year. So we have to take 48 divided by 12. So that tells me that 48 months is equivalent to four years. That's what needs to go in our equation. So when we go through and we multiply all three of these pieces together, we get 480. And now let's make sure we're answering the question. What is the interest? Well, the interest is $480, or we have $480 in interest. So once again, it should look familiar. The only difference here is we had to convert that 48 months to years. All right, skip the U try. You guys will work on that in class. Let's take a look at example two. So now for example two, we are dealing with sales tax, okay? So let's take a look at this problem. Tanya buys a television for $1,385.95. I'm going to go ahead and circle that because that's going to be important or highlight it. We have an 8.5% sales tax. What the question is asking you is how much will she pay for the television. So I'm going to highlight that too. We want to make sure we're actually answering the question. So let's go ahead and start off. We need to find out how much sales tax Tanya is paying for this television. To find sales tax, what we want to do is we want to take our initial amount and we need to multiply it by our percent of sales tax. Now, just like with rate in our interest formula, we always want to make sure we write our sales tax as a decimal. So we need to move our decimal two places to the left. So we need to multiply this by 0 0.085 instead of 8.5. What I get when I multiply this is 117.81. Remember we're talking about money, so we always want to be rounding to the nearest hundredth. 
Now, if you guys stopped there and said, okay, my answer is 117.81, you would be incorrect because that is only the tax. We want to know how much will she pay for the total with the television price and with the tax. So if this is just your tax, what we have to do then is take your original price of the TV and we need to add what she's paying for sales tax. In this case, 117.81. When we do that, we end up with $1,503.76. So how much will she pay for the television? She will pay this much for the TV. All right, if you take a look at our next example. So flip your page. Now we have example number three. So we want to make sure we're reading this carefully. On his last te test, Brody answered 38 questions correctly out of a total of 40 questions. What percentage of the questions did he answer incorrectly? Okay, so first of all, what we want to do is we want to figure out, well, how many did he answer correctly first? Because that's going to be easiest for us. You guys know how to calculate this already. All the time when you guys get quizzes and tests back and you want to find out your grade, we always take the number of questions that you got right divided by the total number of questions. When you guys do this, we get 0.95. So what that tells you is that you got a 95% on your quiz. So you answered 95% of the questions correctly. Because remember, to change a decimal to a percent, we now move the opposite way, two spaces to the right. But be careful, because the question is asking you, how many did he answer incorrectly? Incorrectly. So we know if there's a total of 100% and you got a 95% correct, so we can just take 100 minus 95 to tell us that Brody answered 5% of the questions incorrectly. Another way you guys could have done this, if you wanted to skip your first step, you could have just said, well, if you got 38 correct, that means you only missed two. So we could take 2 divided by 40, and this would give us 0 0.05, which we would know is 5%. So you have two different ways of doing this problem. Both ways get you the correct answer. All right, if we take a look at our next example, okay, we got a lot to answer here. So first thing that we have is, for example four, Dimitri went to Sports Authority. What we have is that he bought a pair of cleats that were on sale for $25. He paid with $100 bill and there was 9% sales tax. So what you have to do here is answer three questions. What was the total cost of the cleats including sales tax? Explain how you found the total cost. And lastly, how much change did he receive if he's paying with that $100 bill? So let's start. What was the total cost of the cleats including the sales tax? Well, first we know we have to calculate the sales tax, just like we did in example two. So what we have to take is 25 times, we have to change that sales tax to a decimal, so 0 0.09. When we do that, we end up with $2.25. So that, remember, is telling you what your tax is. But we want to know how much did he pay total. So we have to take that tax and we have to add it to our original amount. So we would just take 25 plus 2.25, and Dimitri ended up paying a total of $27.25 for the cleats. Explain how you found the total cost. Well, we just did that. So in your own words, make sure you guys are answering part B. What did you do? We multiplied our price times the percent of sales tax, and once we got that sales tax, we added it to the original price. Lastly, for part C, we want to know how much change did he receive? Well, he paid with a $100 bill. So we have to take 100 and subtract the total amount that he spent, which was $27.25. When we do this, Dimitri should have received $72.75 in change. We have one more example, so let's take a look at example five, okay? This is going to be one of those percent change problems. So we're going to go through and use that formula that we talked about at the beginning of this video. Lauren purchased an iMac for 
Two years later, she sold it for $100. We want to find the percent change in the value of the iMac. So remember our formula has a numerator and a denominator. In the numerator, this is the amount of either the increase or the decrease. Okay, that's going to be in our numerator. In the denominator, remember that's the original amount. So let's start with the denominator because that's the easier of the two. How much was it when Lauren bought it originally? It was $200. Now we need to figure out the percent increase or decrease. Well, what we want to do is we just want to take what we started with, so in this case we had $200, and we're going to subtract what she sold it for. So in your numerator, you should have 200 minus 100. Now we just simplify. Well, we know this is the same as saying 100 over 200, which gives me 0 0.5, okay? But we want to find the percent change. We need to change this to a percentage, from a decimal to a percentage. So we move our decimal two spaces to the right, so that tells me this is equivalent to 50%. But remember, what I told you guys is it can either be a 50% increase or decrease from the original price. So if we have 50%, it's your job to figure out is it an increase or a decrease? Well, let's take a look. If it started at 200 and then she sold it for 100, did Lauren lose money or gain money? Well, she lost money. She bought it for 200 and was only able to sell it for 100. So since she lost money, this would be a 50% decrease. Or you could also think of it as the price is decreasing. Either way, it's a 50% decrease. Don't forget to fill out the bottom portion after watching this video. What can you do? What do you still not know how to do? And what are you going to do for help?